Barbell Junction. Of why does that always happen? Uh, Assalamualaikum hmm. dan salam sejahtera uh, Selamat kembali kepada rancangan terbaru uh, Simpang Batang Besi <laughs> Batang Besi uh, Today we have uh, an actual physiotherapist uh, yeah. in the house Actual Alvin. What? Actual? Actual? Actual, actual. 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 Oh, physical What did I say? You said actual As if it wasn't actual before Itu juga kan? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, let's start over. Actual physiotherapist yeah? Elvin on the show. Yeah. Um, physical physiotherapist. F- physical physical physiotherapist, physiotherapist in the house. Yes. So, um, Elvin. Yep. Uh, can you just introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. Um, thanks for having me here. Okay, first of all. Uh, I'm Elvin and I'm a physical therapist practicing for maybe four or five years mm-hmm. for now. And uh, previously I was working in a uh, hospital mm-hmm. and now I'm managing my own uh, clinic at Bangsa. It's called Peak Performance Physio Lab. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, when I first started doing house call, okay, before I actually have a clinic. And then after that, that was when I met Faye mm. at that time. Uh, it was maybe 2017, mm. right? Yeah, so 2017, I was doing house call for maybe one year plus. Yeah. Then 2018, last year, I start to have my own uh, business at Bangsa with my partner Priscilla. Uh, so yeah, now I mean we are having we are expanding now uh, from one room to a bigger room at Bangsa right now. And uh, yeah, so I mean normally we do a lot of like uh, rehab um, exercises, um, dry needling, but our main focus will be performance based actually. So we are actually targeting a lot of active people. Mm-hmm. Like uh, those who do sports, okay. Because I myself actually I do a lot of sports last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to be I used to do a lot of like martial arts, yes. So I get injured a lot, and that's mm-hmm. how I actually uh, go into physio as well. Mm-hmm. Wait, can you talk through how you um, what do you, do you have to go through to become a physiotherapist? Okay, so there are de- whether is it diploma or degree. Okay, like let's say degree, you can go either STPM or A levels uh, to get into this. Uh, degree or maybe even diploma as well like for myself I actually started uh, diploma so diploma it really depends on the uni or the college itself what are the requirements but basically I think they need just three credits for like maybe a BM English science mm-hmm. max yeah so so there are a few criteria so it really depends on the college so, so you did how many years uh, of college uh, so diploma three years and uh, degree three years Oh, six years? Yes. Um, is there a certification that says that, okay, now you're a certified uh, physiotherapist? Yes. So, I mean, uh, for diploma itself in Malaysia, we can actually practice as a physio even after, you know, graduate from a diploma di- um, certificate. Mm. Yeah. So, now I'm pursuing my degree. So, uh, I'm at my last year right now. What is the difference between having a diploma and a degree in physiotherapy? Yes. So, of course, uh, diploma... To me, I would say it's more of a basic, okay? Uh, it just teach you what are the techniques that you need to know, very basic. Uh, then, of course, when you come out to work, it's totally different from what you learn in school. Mm. Uh, as for degree, it's actually challenging more on your critical critical thinking. Yeah, so when, like for myself, because I started as a diploma graduate, then when I start working at the hospital and, and I start thinking like, you know, Actually, it need a lot of crit- critical thinking. You need mm-hmm. to keep thinking why is it the patient having these problems mm. and why is it, you know, having uh, all these issues and how we can treat them. And because sometimes when we, how to say, um, when we practice what we learn in school, it may not work mm. for this particular patient, let's say. Um, so you have to change the treatment. Mm-hmm. You cannot just keep following like, you know, okay, I'm going to do manipulation, let's say, on this patient. Uh, five times, ten times, but it still doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you need to change the treatment. Like, let's say two times, three times, it doesn't work, then must be something is, you know, missing. Maybe you didn't do enough of assessment or you, uh, there are some changes in, in their program, in their training program. So, you need to know all these things. So, it's very important as a physiotherapist uh, to know what is their program so that we can actually modify according to their Uh, uh, lifestyle uh, changes. Okay, so uh, uh, how uh, how long have you been practicing? 
um, so about four years. Four, four years. years. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you get into physiotherapy? Mm-hmm. You... So, uh, so I like say, so I used to do a lot of martial arts. Mm. I get a lot of injuries. You know, you you just name it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I almost dislocated my right shoulder from uh, kickboxing. Okay. Yes. So I do a lot of martial arts, and uh, so after that, my dad was actually telling me about chiropractor. Mm. And because chiropractor was very expensive, the cost is about you can actually buy a house with that money. Oh, okay. Yes, Whoa. yes, that's expensive. Yes, because it's a doctor. Okay, uh, you, you mean the education to the become education. a chiropractor? Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. I thought the consultation. Yes, <laughs> okay. I see physiotherapist is quite expensive. <laughs> Sixty thousand for one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there are depends on your, you know, the knowledge mm. and the certificate. Mm. Yes. Um. So yeah, I mean, uh, then after that, because it's too expensive for me, I can't really afford the education. So after that, I got to know about physiotherapy, and it's actually cover more areas in terms of like uh, musculoskeletal. Cardiorespiratory, uh, pediatrics, geriatrics, etc. So we are like a GP in a mm-hmm. sense. Yes. So depends on what's your interest. Okay. Then you can go further into it. So like there's specialist doctor, like maybe orthopedic doctor, uh, woman's health doctor. You know. So yeah. So for physio, it's the same. So that's why uh, for myself, I'm pursuing more on the uh, orthopedics, musculoskeletal side. Mm, is know. there a reason why you chose that? Yes, because myself, I want to treat more people that actually got injured or before they injured. Okay, so we need to prevent the injury from happening before something happened. But how how do you get clients that way? Uh, because you are trying to prevent injury. Mm-hmm. Most likely, people won't see you if they're not injured. Yes. So how do you do that? Yeah. So we're trying to create awareness. See, uh, to educate them that. Not only you injured, then only you see a physio. Mm. We can actually come in to get a check, a body check. Just like you, you know, every year you go for a body mm. checkup to know whether how much is your glucose level, mm. hypertension. Are you have a hypertension, uh, diabetes, okay. etc. Mm. So same as a physio, we trying to educate them about all this. We can actually check their body posture. Uh, to tell them is there any any uh, particular areas that they need to focus or what kind of exercise they can do to prevent the injuries, um, and most of the time people actually thought that oh only those uh, with stroke patients, uh, Parkinson patients, you know, or fracture then only can can see a physio, mm. but it's not really true, you see. So that's why I'm trying to educate people now to tell them like what I said just now before. Any injury happen, you can actually see a physio. So apart from uh, coming on this podcast, mm-hmm. uh, how are you trying to reach? How wh- what are you, what are you doing to get people to do these checkups? Yes. So now I'm trying. We are actually doing a lot of like Instagram, you know, telling people and uh, collaborating with uh, other gyms to tell them. And we are now currently we are actually doing like a corporate talk. In uh, we are collaborating with uh, Maybank, and now I'm talking to Kuku. Kuku International. Mm. Uh, so these are a few uh, ways for for us to actually educate them to create that kind of awareness. Mm. And uh, I myself actually, I you know just uh, Instagram uh, mm. to tell them what 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 we can do as a physiotherapy, and then of course the friends as well, my friends to tell them. How has the response been like with the two companies mm. you mentioned? Yeah, so they actually know now. Okay, just that sometimes it's because they do not need it. Mm. Sometimes, yeah, people don't come to you when they don't need it. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, that was my point. Really. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's that's the hardest part actually. I I find that that's the harder part, yeah. hardest part. Uh, so it take a time, take long time. Okay, C- compared to uh, other countries like let's say Australia or UK, they themselves they know uh where to see, when to see, who to see. Mm. In Malaysia, they thought like you know only they don't need to see. see. Yeah, oh okay. Yeah. Uh, I have fever. I rest. I take Panadol myself. Mm. I rest. Don't train anymore. Don't train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. So yeah, it really is. That's the hardest part to change the mindset. So I believe maybe in the next five, ten years, people will start to know more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, personally, when you when you guys were here during our open day. Yes. Um, Um, because I got a special prize, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> and, <you, laughs> and yeah, and and you did the the assessment. Yeah, I I thought that w- w- once people do that, 
they will realize how mm-hmm. important yeah. yes. the physiotherapy is. Yes. So when you spoke with all these companies, did mm-hmm. you actually give them like you know a basic uh, yes checkup? Yes. So it's very important because sometimes they do not know what is actually happening to them. They thought like, oh, I come in, I'm okay, I'm fine. But once we check, uh, we can actually find out a lot of uh, problems yes, <laughs> in yeah, your yeah. body. Yeah, you said my body is saying it. <laughs> yes, your body is my one saying it. <laughs> so we can actually speculate yeah. or predict what is going to happen in the future. Mm. Maybe knee pain or back pain. Uh, so we can actually, uh, from there, we can actually speculate what going to happen in the future and then we can prevent it like by doing exercises where to focus where to stretch before in any injury happen because sometimes you thought like oh you're going to do deadlift and then oh you yeah. sprain strain your your muscle you thought like oh because of deadlift no mm. sometimes it's because of your posture you know it's already um, uh, uh, run out of the alignment mm. yeah so just like cars okay so every time you go for service to know whether how's your tire alignment is it still in a straight line mm. if let's say there's a you know sang it a bit of yep. course mm. you're gonna fix it correct not? right so same <coughs> to our bodies as well yeah. so the people that that mm. that met with you in, mm. in these companies I'm just curious huh? mm-hmm. um, when you gave them the checkup yes and let's say uh, someone has uh, the same Uh, saying it as, as me, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> do they do they get do they see you uh, after that like a follow up or i- is it still difficult to get them into the mm-hmm. clinic? Yeah, it it is uh, sometimes very difficult to get them because they thought like okay at least I now I know okay mm. so that's it. yeah that's it they they have no pain you see mm-hmm. yeah. yeah no pain that's mean no need to go for physio mm. Mm. yeah so that's why I say it's the hardest. That's why it's very hard to change the mindset. Well, why do you think that people are not going into um, the clinic? Mm-hmm. Did, um, is, is it because of the cost, mm-hmm. or what, what? What? What do you think? Okay, so what I think is actually because one thing is because of the cost itself and the time. Okay, mm. because they if let's say now we are we are working right now, so it's impossible to ask you know take one hour leave to go to mm. do some physio. So. The boss, of course, will. Right. Know, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, what time do you usually get your clients? Yeah. So normally we have we start from 10 to 10 Sometimes until nine. Wow. 9. Yeah. Nine. Nine actually. Like this. Used gym. to be used to be ten actually. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean now we change it to nine o'clock. Nine nine p.m. Nine p.m. Okay. 9 PM. Mm. Yeah. When I first started as a physio mm. doing house call, actually I worked until like maybe eleven twelve. Because that's when people are free, right? Yes, yes, and uh, of course Saturday, Sunday as well. But now uh, we not open yet on uh, weekends. Maybe just Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean the because of the time and the cost itself. So mm. uh, we do have people who are willing to pay mm. because they know the value of it. Mm. Yes. What? Uh, so we are actually educating uh, to to give them a lot of information what they need to do. What happening to your to their body? So like you uh, asked me. So at least now you know what to do. And then I talk to your coach, Faye, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I talk to Coach Faye, mm. and then he tries right. to be my coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he tried to be his athlete. Yeah. yeah. He tried. He's trying to be athlete. Everybody's trying. You tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. yeah. So so we can you know talk to Faye, your coach, to mm. at least where know where to focus, how to train you mm. to prevent the injury. Mm. Yes. So mostly right now it's still just. Athletes, right? Not, not general population. Ah, uh, we do treat general population. What yes. What is the ratio though between uh, general pop and um, okay um, athletes? Maybe seven three. Seven. Mm. Seven, athletes. seven athletes. Yeah, seven athletes, three general mm. population. Yes. That means your opportunity is quite huge. Yes. Right. Get the general yes. pop. Yeah, I mean that's a bigger pool, right? Yeah, but I was just thinking, mm-hmm. how did you convince the general pop that okay, now you have this problem? Mm-hmm. If you don't want, you know, uh, future pain, you can come see us and we can, you know, work things. Mm-hmm. Mm. In my mind, they'll just be like, oh, okay, yeah, but I probably won't get the pain, so I don't want to see you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yes. how how did you convince them yeah. that they need to see you? Yes. So we are, uh, so yeah. So we kind of convince them by telling them what is happening to them, mm-hmm. and then what's our speculation? What's it gonna have? What's gonna happen? Okay. okay. Uh, so they need to know. Okay, then. We tell them, if let's say you didn't do, come for physio, this one can happen. Okay, mm-hmm. so we are trying to prevent it. So, overall, it's just prevention. 
question. But mm. yes, so a lot of education. Mm. Mm. But in most cases, most people will just say, eh, "Okay, I don't really believe you, mm. and I'm really, I'm really interested in this," and they just don't come. Is yes. Uh, so we do have that kind of clients. Okay. Mm. So I mean, it's unavoidable. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we, uh, so we give our name card. Okay. At least we create that kind of relationship mm. first. Okay, mm. to let them know, hey, I'm a physio, I'm Alvin. So if anything happen, you can just give me a call. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we uh, actually today <laughs> we're gonna have a client later mm. that uh, I've been asking her to come because she said she got some issue, mm-hmm. been trying to make appointment uh, for the past few months, and now she just she gave me a call just now and mm-hmm. she said she want to you know come over to have a body check mm-hmm. where she strained herself. Right. Yeah. Right. So people. So she got injured. She got already. injured. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this this body check that you mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, you know, different from how let's say you do like a blood check. You yep. have the the numbers, the figures. Yes. And they tell you exactly what's wrong. Yep. But this is just mostly qualitative. So you just look. So th- there's no machine that measures, let's say, how misaligned your spine is or yes. whatever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So so we we normally would take a camera, okay, mm-hmm. either our camera or yeah camera phone camera. So we take a picture, okay. Normally, how we do it is we're gonna take pictures and then we're gonna assess everything. Then only we're gonna as tell uh, show them the picture, what's actually happening to their body, mm-hmm. and then uh, we we'll ask them the questions like, okay, do you have like shoulder pain by any chance? You know. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yes. Is there a set of questionnaire that you have every time you do a checkup? Okay, we we don't really have a set of questionnaire, but we know what to ask because. Uh, everyone is different. Mm-hmm, like yeah. your body size, your body size, your body design, they mm. are different for you as well. You know, Harris. So, like for myself, also I'm different. So, and then uh, we need to take into account of like uh, what are the previous uh, 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 injuries that you have, and also um, any family history. Like maybe uh, maybe your father or mother has like uh, hypertension, diabetes, mm. etc. So we need to ask all these kind of questions mm. to know what is actually happening to you. Mm. I, I, is it different than when you did it with me here? Mm-hmm. Is it more extensive if we were to go to your clinic? Yes. So I mean, uh, so that time we actually have a quite a long time, right? Yeah. So actually, I did most of the things. If mm-hmm. let's say we have more time, I think I can do a bit more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, I just attended a course. It's called visceral manipulations. So I'm trying to add in uh, into our system. So we have like multiple disciplines. In one system, instead of just like you know muscles itself and joints. Mm, okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. Mm. Right. Just mm. to give you more information. Give more, more, more information. Mm, okay. Yes. Mm. Uh, would you say that the because um, just three four years ago I have not heard of any physiotherapists. Yes. Right. It seems to me that now it's mushrooming. Yes. Um, it is. A yeah. lot in Malaysia. Yes. Why do you think that is? Huh? Is it because the increase of uh, the popularity of uh, CrossFit, powerlifting, weightlifting? Mm, I don't think so. I think mm-hmm. it's because of the college itself, the uni itself. The that, uni, huh? yes. So they are actually like producing too many physio. Mm. Yes. Okay. So they're producing producing too many physio, and then uh, just like doctors, okay, and then they don't have, uh, uh how to say, uh, um, a place to you know for them to work yeah. sometimes. Yes. So they start to like you know do some startup. Uh-huh. Like how I started, you know, mm. yeah. But before that, I actually worked in a hospital. Then after that, you know, few years. Then after that, I come up. Mm. Okay, but th- there must be a reason why there's now a sudden uptake mm. of um, mm. physiotherapy yeah. courses, right? Yes. So I think because now the education, the awareness, people start to know about physiotherapy. Mm. Yes, that's why people go into the phys- physiotherapy. But like some of my classmates actually were forced to go into medical field. Mm. Yeah. Either you do a doc- become a doctor or physio or nurse, you know, as long as you are in a medical field. Mm. So some some of them they were forced to go into it. Yes, so they have no choice. Mm. Like for myself, because of my martial arts. Mm. Mm. And that's why you chose to do the muscle. 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 Does doing MSK give you more um, patience, yeah. or is is that why you went into that? Or? Yes. Uh, so MSK, of course, people will have MSK problems compared to like maybe like cardiac, uh, mm. respiratory, unless you are in hospital. But after I come out as a as a as a freelance that time, actually I realized that it's all related. 
mm-hmm. you can't actually separate them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so MSK sometimes I even teach how to breathe. Breathing mm-hmm. exercises mm. to to a patient, mm-hmm. you know, be, because sometimes they don't. They we just breathing in a six for the sake of breathing, mm-hmm. yeah. But are we breathing correctly? We mm-hmm. do not know. And uh, when it comes to like weightlifting, breathing is very important. Mm. Like kickboxing, breathing is very important. So breathing is one of the main component to actually uh, to keep our body healthy, fit. Okay, because we breathe in, we breathe in a lot of like oxygen, blood circulations. Yeah, so I mean, we cannot actually separate. But of course, our focus would be more MSK. Mm. Yeah, but when it's, there's a cardiac respiratory uh, cases, of course, we still you don't reject them. We, right? we don't reject them. Yeah. Yes, but you probably would refer them to someone else who, if it gets uh, yeah, more complicated, big, yeah, yes, complicated, yes, it's yeah. out of my scope. You know, yeah. then of course I'll refer them out to mm. see someone. Mm. I'm curious, how do you breathe properly, though? Yes, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, it's, um, something it's, that it's very hard to. Um, tell okay, mm. but sometimes we can actually check by how much is your diaphragm. diaphragm. Mm. Yes, uh, we call it xiphoid, the 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 st- uh, sternum. Okay, mm-hmm. and then we will put our two thumbs, and then we're gonna breathe to see is there any movement. movement. Oh, okay. Where? Yes. So where? Where? In the diaphragm, right? Yes, in the diaphragm. <laughs> so okay. is it called diaphragmatic breathing? Is it? Yes, diaphragmatic breathing. But what? we can. Yeah. Hello, it. doctor. Yes. Why am I? Yeah. Why am I hired? It's knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's for it can singing be. as well. What is for singing as well? You yes, sing oh, yes, singing as well. Wait, so, how, so how, uh, what what is supposed to happen when you put your two thumbs? The diaphragm expands. Is it? Yes. So it should actually separate in a symmetrical uh, uh, um, expect in a sense of when oh. we breathe in, we should move together both the both the thumb. both the finger. Okay, but if Sorry. let's say one side is actually moving a bit more. That means something is off. Mm. Yes, that has, That's what that makes has our to be bodies. like a very uh, unconscious, subconscious yeah. thing uh, that everybody does, right? Uh, how yes. do you like decide this? You know. Yes. So it's just like uh, our right hand and left hand. We can uh-huh. actually train right and left, right? Yeah. yeah. But this one, how do you control? Yes, yes. We, we we need a bit more uh, focus, attention, like you know, uh, to 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 really breathe in into one side. Oh yes, okay. we we can actually do that. So well, so it's not just the the mistake. It's not just breathing with your with your chest. Yes, like because people usually just breathe into the the yes. chest, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, most people breathe. Yes. Here, like so they should breathe in the diaphragm. But diaphragm. When they breathe in the diaphragm, they should also breathe it symmetrically. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes. I mean, how hard not, is it to teach as, that? Oh, uh, <laughs> it is quite hard. <laughs> yes, it is quite hard actually. Mm. It takes some time to really focus onto one side, and breathe. Mm. Is it, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Is it possible some people might have um, skeletal imbalance? For example, I think yes. some of my ribs are more protruding on one side. Yes. Would that affect how my, you know, my, my breathing symmetrical symmetry, you know? Yes. So if let's say like uh, for you, because uh, one side one side of the ribs is uh, more flare up, right? Something like yeah, that. I, I yeah. think so, I feel it. Yeah. So if you we can. Too much benching <laughs> a certain way. <laughs> yeah, possible. No, it was before that. Yeah. Before or that. maybe be, be, before that, it's because of the breathing. Then your bench press yeah, oh, okay. will be m- more s- m- one-sided. One-sided, okay. Yes. No, I mean this is just anatomical, and then mm-hmm. that that causes the. So maybe it's not really a problem. Mm-hmm. So you can't really change it. Have Sorry? to check. You can't change it. Cause yeah, yeah. M- yes. oh, maybe you can't change it to the textbook degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to see whether is it a structural or is it a functional. Oh, uh, okay, okay, yes. right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so if like it's a structure, then you can only fix it to a certain degree only, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we can't really fix. It. So what? <coughs> what's the benefit of? Fixing breathing. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we need uh, oxygen air. air to our brain. <laughs> What's the better than <laughs> breathing? Makes, makes you yeah. smart. Makes you Just smart. imagine you, you don't, don't breathe. You, you don't die. You're gonna you're gonna black out. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's not my point. <laughs> <laughs> point. Oops. But, <clears throat> what is what is the more ben- benefits Yeah What's the yeah. benefit Benefits. That you get From mm. breathing properly Singing correctly Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, no, More PRs. Not, not say what's the benefit How much benefit mm-hmm. Can you get By fixing your breathing Okay Correct so, me if I'm wrong though. Like if you, if you breathe like So you breathe a certain way I think I had this issue For a bit before um, mm-hmm. Melissa like helped me with it um, If you're breathing All the time Super shallow Short breaths Right You're mm-hmm. entering What's that uh, 
uh, sympathetic or something. Um, ah, sympathetic the, nervous system. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so, so, it's like you, if you're taking very short, shallow breaths all the time, you're the frequent, in, frequent breathing. Yeah, frequent breathing like that, you're always in a very um, like fight or flight mode for your body, mm. yeah, right? Mm. Compared to if you're having deeper breaths, you're yes. more in a rested state, mm. so you're yes. covered mm. better. Yep. It's, it's a lot of very like passive things that add up to it. Mm. But uh, okay. <coughs> Uh, if you breathe shallow, yeah, shallow, low, uh-huh. right? Uh, uh, yeah, shallow. Uh, if you, yeah, if you breathe shallow, you mm. breathe, you you breathe more times, right? Yeah. Wouldn't Shorter you get breaths. the same amount of oxygen if you just no. breathe properly? Because uh, then, no. then your heart rate, yeah, your heart rate starts to go up, huh? right? So you're stressed out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you're stressed. Like so, uh, it's like it's like you asking me like if you after you run, right? Yeah. You're still breathing the same amount, like if in one breath, but you're having a lot of shorter breaths, same mm-hmm. amount of oxygen, right? But the type of breathing is different, mm. right? Because you're breathing quicker to get in that oxygen exchange. Whatever happens when you breathe in fast, so you can continue running. Yeah. You're not going to be taking like deep, slow breaths to relax. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's a difference. You're laughing at me. <laughs> no, no. I'm <laughs> oh, but uh, so. I would think that some people, um, people who maybe have higher body fat percentage, mm-hmm. may have trouble, shorter. you know, difficulty breathing. So, do, do they have a tendency to have shorter breaths? Body fat, uh, if they're obese and stuff like that, you know, obese. I'm have, breathing okay. fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not, we're not. We're not talking about. We're you. not talking about you. <laughs> Don't be so sensitive. You look fine too. <laughs> oh, he's been eyeing me since this is the start of the podcast. But yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, because I know a lot of um, fat people. A lot of, Heavy weight lifters, they have sleep apnea. Yeah. So okay. I, I, that might be coming from you know the fact that oxygen is not coming because mm-hmm. they're not what, breathing what, properly. What's, in, in, what's mm-hmm. sleep apnea? I think they like they just wake they up just in the middle of the night. Yeah. Because well, of I lack of oxygen. Yeah. oxygen yeah. Yeah. So they have to sleep oh, like, like machine, and then they work, just wake up. <laughs> um, and maybe it's more dramatic. Like <laughs> it's yeah, no, it, it feels really bad. It feels oh, like, is it? like yeah. basically you wake up because you feel like you have no Out air. Yeah. Like because you stop breathing. Right. It's because yeah. when you lie down, let's say you lie down flat, right? Like you have a lot more uh, mass, whatever. Right? It's pressing into your lungs or your uh, pro- uh, air yeah. passages, right? Yeah. So you just you can't breathe. Oh, I thought it's always like in the Malay culture that uh, the hantu. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe that. What's it called? It. Uh, uh, it might be that. Yeah. So actually, there's a scientific explanation for that. Oh no, that's that's something else. That's sleep paralysis. Something else. Yeah, sleep paralysis. It's more psychology. Oh, that's different. Yes. I think we need some so, citations. Not so those over, yeah, so those heavyweight lifters, they need to use like a, a mask. Mm. Uh, the CPAP. Yeah, CPAP. CPAP thingy yeah. They can sleep. Probably. I was going to buy it. It's oh, fucking it? expensive. It, yeah, it is. It is. Beep. <laughs> Sorry. It's really expensive. It's like 15,000 ringgit. Why would you need it? You have sleep. Uh, I had you? sleep. Oh. Yeah. What was the cause of it though? A lot of things. Uh, I had like a fungal infection along my okay, face. Okay. Oh. My tonsils were infected, so I had to get it removed. Oh, the, the, this January is it? When you had that? Uh, no, no, this is before. Oh, the January yeah. is just because it's recurring. Okay. Yeah, and um, I had to get my tonsils removed. I had to uh, figure out a way to get rid of my my sleep apnea. Happened because I had uh, post nasal drip first. Post nasal drip is when the, the mucus builds up, and mm-hmm. when you sleep, it drips into oh, okay. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so so the throat. So the passage. Yeah, uh, it, it irritates your throat. Then mm-hmm. it gets inflamed, then it gets infected, and it leads to your lungs and whatnot. So right. I had like a pretty mild like bronchitis as well because every time I breathe, I could feel like the phlegm in my lungs. Mm-hmm. I could actually blow it out of my lungs. Like I could feel it like rattling around inside. Right, and that wasn't right. fun. So the sleep apnea that I had was actually pretty bad. I was waking up every like 10, 15 minutes. Oh. That was horrible. I couldn't sleep. That was for like six months. That's actually wow. when I started, yeah. When I started, uh, I think it was after like three months of weightlifting. So maybe it's correlated to weightlifting. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you fix it? Overtraining. A lot of things. A lot of things. I had to... Uh, besides the surgery and... Yeah, get that thing, get the infection removed. Mm. Uh, I had to do like a lot of like nasal washes to get rid of the With the sea, the salt water and stuff. No, no, don't put no. salt water up your nose. Oh my god, that's gonna. <laughs> Isn't that how you. Like, Ammonia. Yeah. No, it, like, like, like you, you can try. You can push try it once and it comes out. Comes yeah. Out. Yeah, There's yeah. a specific mixture. Okay, it's yeah. not like literally not salt, salt. salt. That's gonna water, burn. So. That's gonna burn, yeah. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to do a whole bunch of things just to fix it. Even though after the surgery, after you remove your tonsils. Uh, I still had the post nasal drip, so the, the mucus is still dripping mm. into. Because the, the fungal infection wasn't going away, it's somewhere deep in my right. nasal Fine. passage, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you were saying about fat people having. Uh, yeah, trouble breathing, uh, shallow breaths. Because? Mm. 
because I think because there's a lot of mass, yeah, yeah. mass but their neck is thick so when they sleep like they can't breathe so. but I think so even when they're like resting like, they, they self choke yeah, themselves right, or? Like, yeah they choke themselves <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway we were asking yeah. what yeah, so, so if you breathe properly mm -hmm. what are the, some of the additional benefits that you can get from breathing properly well okay um, you can of course bring in more blood circulation more mm. oxygen okay. you know, to your body and you can train even harder actually Yes, so soon we're gonna have a, a metabolic analyzer, mm -hmm. okay, where we can actually measure your breath by breath. Oh, the one that oh, you blow, okay. yeah. you yes. breathe through, through yes. the, to, to, to the tube, to a, right? tube, yes. Yeah. So like you, mm -hmm. how you see those uh, TV, you know how the athletes yeah. will run on uh, the monitor, yeah, yeah, yeah. those, those VO2 max. Yes, yeah. VO2 max. So we're gonna uh, launch it soon, now. Yes, so we can actually measure the oxygen. oxygen. Yes, the, oh, yes. Okay. You're talking. You you bought that thing with the computers and whatnot. Like yes. So with. now this one is portable. Portable. Ooh. Yeah, this mm. portable. Oh. Yes. Well, so how just, much is that equipment, bro? Uh, you, are, aren't you allowed to share? Yes. It, it, <laughs> yes. It's twenty. Oh, yeah, share it, man. Come on. Yeah. Just how much? It's twenty plus. Oh uh, my thousand. god. I'm not worried for about this small. Yeah. I'm not worried portable about one. Yes. yes. It. For I'm the worried about you buying it. Yeah. It's like a set of barbell. Breathing yeah, it's like 190 kg. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we can actually measure by uh, breath by breath. And then oh. we can actually depends on the what's your goal, whether you mm. want to increase your muscle mass or uh, fat loss, you know. Wait, so we hold can actually on. measure. No. Come on, how? <laughs> that, that's, huh? a, that's a system. Um, that's why I'm still trying to, you know, experiment it. I mean, how. Well, what what kind of the, advice does it give from the one of, mm -hmm. let's say from form of oxygen in your breath yes. and then what, what's the follow up? Yes. So so from the statistic, we uh -huh. can actually see how much air you are taking in and how much carbon dioxide you are actually uh, breathing, breathing out. out. Okay. Yes. So we, from there, we know uh, how we can improve that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a I can't remember what's the name. Uh, RMR metabolic rate. Uh, resting metabolic rate if I'm mm -hmm. not wrong mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so we can actually me measure that by using the device yes. so, so if you can increase that then it's better for weight yes. loss so, yeah. so we know how to how to program yourself what to eat okay and how to train whether you do you need more like uh, strength training or maybe oh. you need more cardio you know and uh, what kind of food you need more like maybe you need more protein you need more carbs etc wait bro yes. I'm gonna put you on the spot how would you know that the yeah. machine tells so you. So the machine tells yes. Well, how come yes. How, so so from be, that yes. The machine is so objective. It can, yeah. yeah. So so we can actually send the whatever statistic result uh -huh. to the HQ, okay. and they'll come up with the. So they based on statistics. Yes, they based on statistics, mm. and depends on what's your goal as well. Okay. Yes. Hmm. But I just wonder what the correlation between all that is though. Like, so if you want to lose fat, mm -hmm. um, and then. Uh, how is that related to like the breathing? Breath like yeah, like like oxygen. the data on it, yeah, yeah. The oxygen mm -hmm. and whatnot. Like um, how much of a strong correlation they have between the two, and how it's actually gonna apply. So like, mm, I guess what I'm trying to say is like how how is the the breath that you're having mm -hmm. going to dictate what you're supposed to train? Other than if you're tra trying to train for cardio, of yes. course, then that's so, quite obvious. But yeah. if you're not. Yeah, so mm. it really depends on your goals. Mm. Yes, so um, I'm still trying to figure out how how it really works. Mm. Uh, all these things, yes, mm -hmm. because it's quite new to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think it's quite new in the market as well. Okay, especially mm -hmm. like you know talking about portable. Uh, this one, yeah, that language. reminds me like that DNA thing you were showing me about oh, yeah. what to eat and all yeah. that. Mm. Um, nah, I, it's it's cool, but the yes. application, I don't know. Yes, I don't. Know. I believe anything. <laughs> right. Um, uh, until uh, it's it's proven, like you yes. know, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Yeah, like, yeah. So okay. Yes. It seems like it's science based. Yes. You know. See, I mean, I guess it's not it's not a matter of if you can prove or disprove it. It's just that the benefits of do you need yeah, do you to need invest it. that much it, it, for the marginal return? Yeah. I guess it, it depends on the, uh, the individual's yeah, goals, I guess right? So. But yeah. I mean, w w when when you give the impression that oh, okay, you this thing works. Mm -hmm. But then, to to what extent, right? Yeah, one percent is still 1%, working. Yeah. Yeah. It's still working. Yeah. So that people, will, yeah, I suppose athletes would probably do it more than one percent. I guess, normal, normal if you're like a world class athlete, right. yeah, probably. Like you, probably. right? I mean, yeah. What's the harm yeah, for you, let's say someone like you mm -hmm. to Pretty try all? Suit. Yeah, to, <laughs> nineteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, you don't buy the equipment. You don't buy the equipment. You go to the. the test is not going to cost. The test is not going to cost. Probably not going to cost. You know, low. So, 
Oh, even that's two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, really? That's it. Dollars. I mean, even a even a gene testing is like two thousand, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that gene yeah. thing. Right, yeah. they take your blood and. I mean, and if you the go to the hospital, you check, check your de- uh, yeah, DNA, DNA, yeah, right? DNA testing. Yeah, from the hospital is two thousand. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, my question is this: I I know it's expensive, but if it it if it can give you that edge. That's Wouldn't the thing. you do it? Yeah. So it's a cost sure. versus the yeah. benefit, right? I don't think there's enough evidence yet to show that there will mm. be an edge. I think that's the point. It's like uh, there may be an edge. That, that's the thing. Mm. So that, that, that time you spent analyzing, reading your stuff, you could probably train. And that will probably give you 10% more compared to um, overthinking. the two hours and three hours. Of I, I don't know. I, I reserve my judgment. <laughs> because yeah, there, there, must be a, must, there must be a reason for why all this stuff money. comes up, right? Yeah, so money. Yeah. Money, <laughs> yeah. Much. Well, yeah. money yeah. makes the world go around. Anyway. Yeah, I will say one of the reasons is actually you, at least you know how you... Um, train better mm-hmm. how do you can how, how can you tr- let's say you need more oxygen right uh, how can you train to get more oxygen into your body itself mm. yes, that's what the device uh, you know the function itself okay. for me mm. well, yeah then I guess at that point it's also like uh, how do you know that you actually may need more oxygen because like, like you said like everybody's mm-hmm. body is different right yep. so what if the amount of oxygen that you have currently or that you're intaking is okay mm-hmm. okay for you yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's really okay yes so there's actually a a, 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 how to say there's intersections of carbon dioxide and also oxygen as well mm. so there's a, I think there's a, there's a how to call it a, a skill mm-hmm. okay depending on your body weight your height okay and they will actually have a how to say a skill you know how much you need to reach how much you need to target so this is what based on average statistics or something yes like that? yes okay oh, okay so, so it could not might not be accurate yes so it's very 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 yeah. oh, okay because yeah. it's very just average right mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 well so the statistics it's, it's, it's is based on the number of uh, subsets right subset, yes so the more you have which i'm sure the manufacturer or, or, the, the, or the equipment manufacturer would have Th- those kind of subsets mm-hmm. e- enough subsets to, to, to substantiate support, yes. that the thing works or doesn't work la. Yes. sometimes right. it's just one study sometimes <laughs> it is yeah but um, I'm sure you people. can tell but if it's at 20k uh, I'm oh, yeah, sure 20K, someone uh, like you would do your research yes. before mm-hmm. buying it right yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm, so I'm we have saying. done uh, I mean we would it take us some time actually to think whether should we buy it or should we uh, not buy it but, okay, okay. But, okay how did you come to the decision of getting that equipment mm-hmm. and why okay, do you need so, it so, so because we are actually targeting more uh, MSK uh, people mm-hmm. and because they are like I said depends on your goals okay like for myself let's say I want to reduce uh, body fat okay how can I actually do it and it can actually measure are you actually burning your fat or burning your carbs that's mm-hmm. one of the function as well mm-hmm. yes so from there from breathing now I know I sound skeptical <laughs> yeah. it just yes. means that I want to know yes of course of course how from oh. from what from breathing from the, yeah from the breathing how mm-hmm. can you know that I'm burning I, more I fat. would love to know whether yes. I'm burning fat or yes. what you yes. know because uh, there's some a lot people of fat that I need to be burning <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's why some, some people actually like you you know uh, how and come me. I've been training you know but I'm not burning fat you know mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so there must be something else we can measure I, I have not been training <laughs> yeah, because you haven't been training. Your calories, yeah, training. That's why. Yeah, but yeah. but yes. but just from because you said for more than uh, just from just breathing, you can know um, I'm burning fat or I'm burning something else, right? Yes, you could. Yes, you can actually <clears throat> the, the the device itself they can actually tells you are you burning more fat or are you burning more uh, carbs? Okay, so from that itself can also uh, come up with a program as in together with the oxygen and carbon dioxide as well mm-hmm. to to come up with the whole uh, statistics. Yeah, so I miss out the the cups and the fat part mm. yes okay so basically the, the machine actually measures the oxygen measures your carbon dioxide mm-hmm. probably is, are there any other gases uh, <laughs> no, I, I think only these two <laughs> these, these two, lah. Yes, plus, these two plus probably your breathing pattern whether it's shallow whether it's deep uh, what, what no, are the, I don't think so what are the markers do you, uh, that the machine actually uh, takes in right? nicotine no <laughs> no, I don't think. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out. How, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how does the machine actually come up with those uh, recommendations? Or, mm-hmm. You know, what sort of input does it take, and then how does it look at that input and then come up with a hmm. diagnosis? Yeah. So if you look at the Google. device itself, Google. yeah, there's a tube, okay, where only oxygen and 
uh, carbon dioxide is coming up mm-hmm. and in okay so from there they can actually take in uh, how to say the, the 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 data okay of uh, how much is in go into your lungs that's mean going in okay mm-hmm. so they will eliminate whatever other gases like nitrogen you know etc mm-hmm. okay yes. So they only take in oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay. That's how they measure it. Mm. So it'll be, I would say, it's actually more precise itself. Okay. And um, um, so that's a time of when you do like a uh, cardio, let's say, uh, air bike. Mm. Okay. There's a time. There's a duration. Okay. Where you reach to a certain point. Okay. When if let's say by so the 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 the, the how to say the test. Is conducted for maybe eight to fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. If let's say I start to gas out at four minutes, so that means something is off. Mm. Yeah. So they can actually tell, you know. Okay. So your oxygen is getting lower. Mm. Yes. So that's how the statistic works, and how uh, how mm. do we know uh, whether we need how much we need more oxygen? Yeah. Okay. So so in that particular example, right? So you you want to optimize the oxygen intake yeah. for that particular person or athlete, mm-hmm. right? So at f- the fourth minute, what do you do as a physiotherapist to actually make sh- to make sure that they're actually getting the enough oxygen? Okay, so that's a test. <coughs> okay, that's a test, pre-test and post-test. So pre-test, of course, we're gonna check. Okay, then we know how much is your just at one RM. Okay, how much you can go? How heavy you can go? Okay, then. So that's uh, like one RM for your body. Mm-hmm. Okay, then we know we have a data, we have a statistics. Then from there we can uh, program uh, whether do we need more strength, more cardio, you know, etc. Then uh, what kind of uh, food you need to take? Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, then after that, maybe uh, three months later or six months later, we're gonna do a post test to check again to reevaluate how much now uh, the oxygen maybe you can now do air bike for maybe eight minutes without mm. uh, the the oxygen going, going down yeah mm. going down I think, yeah. I, think mm. i think i think we need to do more of a test on that because like mm. maybe we get one group yep. actually following a recommendation from the machine one group not following recommendation but still training yep. mm-hmm. because i'm i'm under the impression that you will still improve anyway regardless mm-hmm. of what yeah, just yes. because you're training yep So you, so it's like if you follow this one and you get yes. the data, it might be a bit biased because uh, yeah, you that's follow true. the thing and it's like oh, that's why you're better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, so and I think we need yeah. more data. On that. And if you don't score, you know, within the average that's in the machine, mm. then it just shows that you have room to improve. So if, even if you take the advice given by the machine or advice given by you would by still improve regardless like of like general, advice, you know, right? principles, the strength that you can find in like textbooks. You, then you just you probably just you probably will improve. You will improve. Yeah, because you're doing more of it. Yeah, something. Doing yeah. something. Mm. <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Because mm. <laughs> in, in my mind, I was just thinking, okay, let's say okay, you have, your oxygen stops at this amount, right? So yeah. it's, like, it's suboptimal. So you should eat, you should eat I don't know, then they'll prescribe a deficit. More apples. I don't know, they'll, they'll prescribe a deficit. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, eat rice, eat chicken, eat broccoli, and whatever. And then you think you're improving because you're eating that specific diet, but it's because you're in a deficit. You're you're losing fat. And you're getting healthy. Yeah, you're losing fat, so you're getting healthy. And so your breathing improves. You know what I mean? But, but that I, means the machine works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I guess that's the point, right? Yeah, I, I guess mean, I, you wouldn't know if you yes. you didn't test. Oh, you just come zilfit, right? right. <laughs> you just come zilfit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, at least it will be it will how to say um, less. Time consuming. Yeah, at least so. you know where to focus. Yeah, mm. it's quicker uh, because you know exactly what you need to do, yep. as opposed to just uh, guessing mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah, yep. right. Yes. Mm. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're guessing. But if you did, you no, but you wouldn't guessing. know. I would. How would you know? Google. If you're doing four minutes, no, you're no, guessing. No, out. No, you're probably gonna do more cardio. For, for <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> let's say, um, if you want to reach to a certain goal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let's say you fall short. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Check the program. Check the training. All right, coach. Yeah, Google but it. assuming, uh, mm-hmm. uh, if you've done your six weeks or eight weeks, for example, right, you don't hit the the target. Mm-hmm. You do it another time, you still don't hit the target. Mm-hmm. There must be something wrong. Okay, But there are a lot of things you could look at yeah. before yeah. you would go super in depth into. I mean, it. then I guess you'd have to look at who designed, who programmed the the machine. You know, did they get input from like? Bodybuilders or whatever coaches and stuff like that, or is it just based on research data, which is isolated and sometimes not practical? Not, yeah, yeah. So, for example, maybe they give advice based on research that that, that says that oh, um, eating carbs increases your insulin, makes you fat. 
But those tests are usually something like, oh, they just drink like a glucose thingy yeah, just in, a, glucose in isolation. Thing. Yeah, so it's very isolated. So, yeah, so it's, it's, evidence. it's not applicable to you know practical things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if it was, if it was if it was formulated based on the opinion of coaches and like, you know, like top athletes and stuff like that, then maybe the advice given would be you know would practical. help you in those cases where right, you suddenly. Right. But if it's just like yeah, so I, a coach is always better lah. Ah uh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> uh, okay. So so. Um, oh, so you're you're feeling threatened by the machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty <Exactly>. much. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, like di- I mean, this is a good discussion. Yep. Right. It is. Um, what's your point of view mm-hmm. in all this? Mm-hmm. Like, wh- why do you think you you wanted to invest in, in such a machine mm. Yes. Mm. In, instead of like hiring a coach, mm-hmm. for example? Yeah. I mean, because uh, we need uh, how to say a result oh, yeah. as an a test. Okay, to, to we need a tangible thing. A I tangible mean, yeah. thing, yes. Mm. At least you can see, you know. It's not like, okay, you, now you can train more, but how about the internal organs? How about the mm-hmm. oxygen, you know? Are you taking more oxygen? Yeah, so like, mm. let's say you're a runner. Now you can run 10 minutes. No. But if, let's say, in the future, you can still run 10 minutes, yes, I mean, but maybe you're not sleeping well, mm-hmm. you're not eating well, you know. That will also affect how your body mm. system uh, uh, functions as well. Okay, yeah, yes. I think that's going to So it's a lot yes. quicker to get the feedback lot compared yes. to like mm-hmm. asking yes. you, like, oh, did you sleep enough? Yeah. Are you being also, an idiot? Be <laughs> <laughs> that's my point. I know. Mm. <laughs> but yes. from a business point of view, I'm, I'm mm. just going to take you back to yep. your, the, the, your decision yes. uh, on buying this machine, right? <clears throat> Do you see uh, like a lot of um, cases that you can uh, or patients that you can treat, therefore you can get, mm-hmm. you know, your revenue to cover the cost back and, and things like that. What was the... Yeah, I believe it will take some time, okay, to, for me to get back the profit itself, mm. get back the, you know... Uh, but, but you, s- you we, saw we, reasons enough... Yes, to... to, to, to ed- education, mm-hmm. okay, a lot of education. But of course, some people might debate, you know, right. whether is it working mm-hmm. or is it, yeah. you know, like how, how, it, what Harris yeah. says, yeah, just now. So I believe uh, it will take some time uh, to make people people believe on on it, and oh, that's why I'm still like experimenting it and mm. how it really works. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, that's why I say I'm gonna launch it soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm still launch it here. Yeah, <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Launch it here. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yes. Right. Um, how how much of that machine is um, in the whole physiotherapy process? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how as the word it, is. As you know, like it, mu- it must be a, because it's just a, a test, right? It's just mm. a machine oh, okay, that okay, tests, okay. right? Mm. So what comes after that? How how big of a job do you have once mm-hmm. you have that information about your your, your okay. customers or clients? Yeah. So after we get the test result, okay, of course we're gonna liaise with uh, person trainers. You know, at least we can tell our clients what to train. You can you know show it to your to your coach. You know, at least they know uh, how to train you better. And from our point of view, of course, it would be more uh, rehab itself, performance itself. Are you able to lift heavier? Are you able to uh, uh, go faster, stronger, you know, all, all these things? And then is there any injuries, you know, from our point of view, from physio side? Mm. Okay. And then maybe you can like uh, also talk to, the, talk to the coach, you know, what is actually happening to this client? Uh, maybe where to focus more, as in like uh, now... Now you have a shoulder injury, okay, maybe can, that will actually affect your performance, that will actually affect your training. So for us as a physio, we need to focus, need to treat the shoulder, you know, before go back to the training. Mm. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm coming from the point of view that you are trying to get people to come in before they get injured. Yes. Right. So I'm assuming this uh, breathing uh, apparatus thing yeah. <laughs> is at the stage where people are not yet injured. Yes, it's it's actually the yes right yes. So I, I just want to understand from that point, what do you what would you prescribe to a particular cast, a patient a client? Mm-hmm. So it, that's why I say it depends on your goal whether okay. you want. Yes. Right. Okay. So goal understand that. Yep. So let's say I want to go in. Yep. I want to breathe into this tube. Okay. I want to see whether my <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, okay. right. And then um, I say I want to do fat loss. Okay. Right. Yep. So Faye's my coach. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you actually tell Faye mm-hmm. to 
Yes. Work. So because on. we are having the device, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have the test, okay. Then after we got the test, the results, okay. Then I'm gonna tell Fei, okay. These are the program that you can uh, focus on. Like maybe okay. So as may need more uh, strength training, mm -hmm. uh, then you can focus more on strength and then reduce the cardio, okay. And uh, what kind of uh, food nutrition that you need more. Maybe you can you know talk to a nutritionist or maybe Faye can you know help you to program itself as well. Mm -hmm. So now we are actually talking to a few uh, nutritionists. We are still looking you know uh, nutritionists and also these uh, coaches to work with us as well for mm -hmm. this uh, project. So yeah. the impression that I'm getting is this is not physiotherapy per se. Mm -hmm. I think yes, it's like so something different. Yeah, that's why we are called peak performance physio lab. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So it, this is a different from, a, a different thing from physiotherapy. Yeah, slightly a bit different. Okay. But of course, we also teach exercises, but we mm. try not to overlap with like the coaches. Mm. If let's say you have a coach, okay, so we try not to overlap. Uh, but if let's say you train under us, uh, as in like a, a physio, then of course, we have a better idea of what is actually happening to your body as well. Mm. Mm. So essentially, you're trying to build, trying to bring in a new business activity. Yes. Instead of, like just physio itself, enhancing the the, the physio one. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> you what? I'm confused. Confused. No, <laughs> no, no, not say confused, but I just want to understand, yes. and I think a lot of the viewers and listeners would also want to understand yes. the process. Yep. Right. So you give Faye, um, you tell Faye that, okay, I need more strength <coughs> and reduce my Calories. Uh, cardio, ca cardio, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So for how long is the protocol for? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what, what's the measurement? What, what, do you, what, what, what do you look at? Yeah. So we are actually working on a protocol right now. Okay, so what I expect is uh, maybe like come up with a three months. Okay, so we first test you on the first month and then we train, we go training. And of course, you need to follow the program itself, the protocol uh, in, in terms of the training, uh, nutrition, mm -hmm. physio. Okay, then we're going to do a post test. To okay, see when do you do the post test? So it, that's why I'm, say, I'm saying is we are still working on a protocol. Okay. Yes. Because it, it may take time for your body to adjust. adjust. Okay. Yes. Adjust to the mm. uh, uh, whatever protocol that we are actually implementing. Okay. Because it's just it's not like treatment, where we treat the muscle, you feel good. Okay. But the body itself, the internal organs, it will take some time. Yes. So that's why we cannot force it to be uh, how to say, oh you eat this, tomorrow you're gonna get better. Mm. You mm. see. Yes, so that's why you give it a three months uh, uh, period. Mm, okay, mm. so so okay. In in this particular cycle, uh, whatever you want to call it, <coughs> a protocol, whatever. Cycle. cycle. Right. Once once you're you're making fun of me again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I think we need okay. to get you on a cycle. And, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, at the end of the three months, right? Yes. Uh, uh, I go to you again. Yes. Get the test done mm -hmm. uh, again. If 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 I lose weight, mm -hmm. which I think undoubtedly I would be losing weight if I start training, mm -hmm. right? And then what? Undoubtedly. And then yeah. So from our 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 side, I mean, as a physio, of course, we can we can discharge you in terms of treatment unless you have any injury. Okay. okay. Then we know it actually works for you. Okay. Then we can decide whether are we still uh, how to say um, continue with the protocol. Mm. Okay. And then we can see if let's say you want to improve like now I don't uh, now I've reached my goal mm. you know fat loss I just want general fitness mm. okay fine then you know we can just do another test just to you know at least we have a measurement to know how much uh, how to say how healthy are you right now mm. what's your fitness uh, level now mm. okay then maybe in a just like medical checkup you know after right. a few months later mm. you, you can check. just mm. check again mm. yeah to see are you still maintaining or are you improve or you yeah. know, decrease yes. so so like what Harry said the physio part doesn't come into this particular cycle right mm. yes I mean uh, for us it's just treatment okay, okay. so this medical uh, metabolic analyzer should be will be another business mm. a different okay. like, yes, a yes, different business activity yes, like. yes. Yeah, okay. yes so that I mean just that we do have the knowledge of you know how the body works, works yes. Yeah, right. Right. yes that's why we are like so we actually spend a lot of time not talking about physiotherapy, physiotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> I think they apply I think they're both but do you yes. think they, though do you think yes. this um, <laughs> metabolic analysis what's it called yes metabolic analysis will that take away the revenue from your physio business because now people no. are not no. are preventing mm -hmm. but this okay one yes. is prevention the other one is correction right yes so yeah, I wouldn't say um, okay. 
as a, as a physiotherapist, I would want our clients to be as peak as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay, at, always at that peak performance. Mm-hmm. They can train well. They can uh, eat healthy. Okay? okay, they have the education of what is actually happening to their body. So that's our primary goal. Actually, it's not about you come here because you are In injured. Bed. Oh, okay. Yes. So there's also maintenance stuff. Isn't yes, it? maintenance stuff oh, as well. Okay, okay. Yes. Mm. That's probably uh, harder to sell, though. Yeah. Mm. The maintenance. Right? Yes. That's no. why I say it's hard to change yeah. the mindset. Yes. Yeah. But if it's for for athletes, mm. they usually understand, right? They yes. Need yes. The maintenance mm. so it's easier, lah. Yes. So for athletes, because they have the mindset of okay, I injured. I'm gonna rest a while and then I'm gonna follow what physiotherapy say. Okay, mm-hmm. if I can train, I continue training. Then um, you know, go to another next level. That's mean like you can go lift heavier. You know, uh, all these things and then how to prevent further injuries from mm-hmm. from the this one. Mm. Mm. So uh, I think we should talk about physiotherapy, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Science. Yeah, because we were talking about <laughs> oxygen. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe we'll, we'll just take a break and now. I think we've gone like, wow, 56 minutes. Yeah. 56 <laughs> minutes? Yeah. Uh, we'll be right back. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Barbell Junction with Alvin. Yep. ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> so Alvin, yes. Um, uh, let's quickly just get back to physiotherapy. Yep. Right. Yes. So, what exactly that? Uh, what is physiotherapy? Uh, or what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> what is physiotherapy? <laughs> what do you What do you guys do? Okay. Right. So, what, we, what, what sort of services that you you poke provide? You with yeah. So yeah, the treatments. Yeah. There yes. you go. Okay. So we do a lot of A lot of uh, myofascial release, okay. A lot of hands-on movement actually. A lot of hands-on skill like uh, dry needling, myofascial release, uh, manipulation as well. Uh, so we also, uh, like I said, uh, we're gonna implement visceral manipulation into our practice as well. Uh, so where we can actually uh, manipulate the organs, in a sense, because everything are linked. Uh, so we don't just treat muscle and joint for now and now. Yeah. So we're gonna treat. Organs as well in the future. Oh. Uh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes us different. <laughs> I know why you are. <laughs> My organ needs a treatment. Mm, yeah. So, um, how how does? I'm lost for words. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, no, I understand. Like because uh, yesterday when we had um, mm. Dr. Arvin on. Um, he prescribes like certain workouts mm-hmm. to do the hab, mm-hmm. right? Like for example, uh, he has this athlete who had a uh, ACL, ACL, right? yeah, yeah. ACL, and now she's under a protocol. So mm-hmm. I I saw th- um, her video of her doing some runnings, uh, running uh, in cones, you know, like zigzagging, da da da, whatever. So yes. probably to just test just the knees, right? The, yes. Yeah, that's not physiotherapy, right? It is. Oh, that is. It is. It is part of a uh, physiotherapy as well. Is that something that you do or? Okay, so now we don't do as much right now uh, for ACL uh, recon uh, for ACL training. Uh, what we are we are actually evolving. Okay, we want something new in our physio uh, practice. Okay, because I I myself I find that physio itself is actually not enough. So that's why I'm learning new skills. So I would say I I'm actually physiotherapist plus manual therapist. Yes, mm-hmm. so hands-on uh, therapies as well. So that's why I'm taking up all these uh, manipulation skills as well, to learn uh, how to how to treat our clients better, more effectively, more efficiently. Because our body, uh, when we do like you know exercise, maybe sometimes you just need some manipulations, some mobilizations on your joint mm. to feel better. Yes, that you, makes sense. Yes, you just need that little extra right uh, work, but. 
usually do this uh this met, uh, methods i don't know, what do you call it all this needling and uh, mm-hmm. myofascial release yes, yeah. what, what do you call it um uh, mods modality modalities, modalities. Mm-hmm. okay yeah, you can just say that um patches man now i forgot my question <laughs> what do they do what no. how do they work um no why does it work why does mm-hmm. it work? how it works <laughs> does it work Does it work? <laughs> Does it work? Yes. So, so it really depends on the body. Mm. Yes, it really depends on the body. Okay. But it, okay, okay. And I know, I know my question. Mm. I I know like uh, you and your colleagues as well. Yes. Uh, I we've got like powerlifters who go to you guys and then they they get whatever modalities, right? Mm. Mm. <laughs> But they come um, quite frequently, lah. Yes. I would say, yeah. Yeah. Now, does all these modalities? Do they um, actually just release it, release some pressure, tension uh, on your body just at that point of time, or does it really fix the problem that these people have? Okay, that's what I want to know. All right, so I will come back to assessment itself. So to me, it's actually not about the treatment; it's actually more about the diagnosis, the assessment. So you need to know what is actually happening to the body, then only you know what to treat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So treatment, you know, we can do we can do dry needling, we can do MFR, we can do manipulations, we can do you know ultrasound, tens, exercise, what sort of things? These are all treatment. But if let's say you do not know what is actually happening to the body, there's no point. Then you keep recurring, you know, injuries. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my question. Huh? Mm-hmm. Why do they keep coming back? Mm-hmm. Uh, For what case? Uh, let's say an, uh, an example. Okay, I, I know you need an example, but I yeah. only see like powerlifters going there and then. Ah, okay. And okay. Then, then okay. No then, weightlifters for some reason. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes Pain it's killers. because. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's because of the training itself. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's a lifestyle. It's a training that actually caused all this. I can't be telling you. Hey, ask me. Don't train. Hey, Fei, don't train. Mm. You know, there's no way. Because if I said ask you don't not to train, you'll do it. That's mean you, you will do it. <laughs> not training. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, okay. If let's say Doctor I ask Faye, yeah. <laughs> if let's say I ask Faye not to train, mm. of course yeah. that's kind of impossible. Mm. Right now. Ridiculous. Yes, I actually mm. needle him today, and then the next day he will actually message me, "Can I train?" Mm. <laughs> yes. If let's say you know after the needling, there's no soreness, there's no. Um, Uh, discomfort on the muscle or on mm-hmm. the particular area, then of course we can just allow them to train, but with a uh, lower reps, uh, lower sets. Mm. That means lighter lah. Mm. Okay, so do you think that people who come to you mm-hmm. specifically um, uh, from the strength community, they go there just to um, get some relief? Complain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Complain. Complain. <laughs> hmm? Well, they do. Okay, they do like come so, uh, in. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, like for example, like like sometimes when when we my body sore, you just go yes. to a massage yes. therapist, right? That That's, that will uh. be more like sports massage. Mm. Okay, so I won't really ask you much about what is happening to you. Okay, maybe you just come in. I just say, oh, I'm having some soreness uh, on my legs. You know? mm. Then we can just focus more on the legs, but just a general sports massage for mm. your whole body. Mm. But just focusing more on the legs. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. Organ massage too. Yeah, w- what's that about? You're going into the organs. Yes, going <laughs> into the organs. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, now uh, practicing to how to how to treat the uh, visceral the organs. Okay, because they actually say, just imagine the T-shirt. Okay, if let's say there's a knot, like you pulling the 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 T-shirt. Mm. Okay, there's a tension building up. Mm. On your on your on your on your facial, okay, mm. mm-hmm. and it will actually cause some other system to be pulled, okay. Just like how our muscles muscle as well, okay. If let's say the stomach is the one that keep pulling you, there's no point of me asking you, you know, keep doing the thoracic extension exercises, you know, uh, strengthen your back, stretch the abs, but it's the cause is actually coming from the stomach. So you're going deeper. Yes, I'm going deeper. That's what makes us different. How how do you do that though? I mean, uh, okay. So the 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 movement, the manipulation will be very subtle, very gentle. It's not like we can just press. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna hurt the organs. 
you can feel very sharp if let's mm. say you, you press on it. Mm. Yes. Just like you know, people just liver punch you mm. or stomach better. punch you. Right. <laughs> yes. <You better>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so the, the movement will be very subtle, very uh, so it, it can it can actually have to stretch the organs. But someone like me, right? Mm-hmm. You can't even get close to my organs, most there likely. Is, there's wow. way. There's way to Arrogance. get into it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> there's Ghost. way to get into it. Yes. Really? Yeah? Yes. It's all about technique. Hmm? <laughs> Everyone can be saved. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm not worried. It's all about technique. I see. Yes. It's not about okay. like you know whether are you bigger size or smaller size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. They have different size needles, don't we? It's about how you use it. <laughs> yes. We we have you know like, until six cm. If you need, if you need, yeah. if you need longer, then you can let me know. <laughs> yeah. How about we get you longer? I do not want to. I, I don't want to be that kind of show. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let him know. Yeah. I don't know. All right, cool, man. Um, okay. All right. Um, thank you, Alvin, for coming. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, really interesting. You. Like, uh, I learned, learned a lot about oxygen today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all the best to uh, to you. Thank you. Um, if you want to tell where people can find you, your Instagram or mm-hmm. your your clinic, um, please do so. Okay. So, uh, our location is at uh, Bangsa, Jalan Riong. Mm-hmm. It's uh, inside APW. Okay. Um, then our Instagram account will be uh, Peak Performance Physio Lab, P E A K Performance Physio Lab. Okay, mm-hmm. and myself will be Alvin Lim underscore one two three. Yeah, mm. so you can follow us, and then if there's any question, you can just uh, you know drop us a message on uh, Instagram. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks a lot again for coming and spending your Friday afternoon with us. Spending no some oxygen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank mm. you for, for inviting me. <laughs> so, so all of us are getting free uh, oxygen. <laughs> free oxygen. Just uh, briefly free, now. Free treatment now. Free, oh, free, free checkup. Free oh yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, like we'll see you in the. We'll see you in the next episode. See you. See, see you. you. <laughs> That's such a quick outro. Bye. <laughs> Hi. If you're interested to be on the podcast. Send an email to info at zilfit.com.my. Alternatively, you can just give me a call at 012-2361. We can talk about anything. If you want to promote your products, if you want to promote yourself, bring it on. See you on the show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn the notifications on. If you like the video, hit the like button and leave a comment. We're also on Spotify, Instagram and Facebook. The links are in the description. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.